Today we're going to be talking all about Thor Ragnarok. Stay tuned! Good afternoon everyone and welcome to another episode of the Sci-Fi Movie Guy. My name is Mike and we're reviewing Thor Ragnarok. So the first part of this is going to be all non-spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie, don't worry, you can watch that. Then I'm going to rate the movie and then we'll get into spoilers. And I'll give you lots of warning about the spoilers. I'll put up the spoil alert. But right now, don't worry if you haven't seen the movie. I'm just going to tell you my thoughts and give you a rating. So Taika Watiti, the director for this movie... Um, he has comedy chops and it really shows through in this movie. This is probably the funniest Marvel movie out of all the Marvel movies and that's including Guardians of the Galaxy which was a very funny movie. Um, I was a bit worried because in the first 20 minutes of this movie it's all comedy, it's all slapstick and I was like oh my goodness I hope we don't get this for the whole movie and then our villain shows up, Hela, um, and then it gets more Thor-ish like which I like. I love the first Thor movie. I like the second Thor movie. Um, and I like this movie. It's a good movie. Um, we have Marvel, I think, is targeting the 7 to 14 year old audience range on this movie a little bit more because they're getting ready for phase four of Marvel. And that's okay. They need to get the younger audiences into these superhero movies. And I think this is a really great hook to get them in so that they watch all the other movies. Um, this, like I said, very much Guardians of the Galaxy feel to it. The character interactions were great. I love Loki Thor interactions. I love Hulk Thor interactions. Um, I like Odin interactions with his two sons. I really enjoyed um, Hela. I really enjoyed this villain. I think this is one of the best Marvel villains so far. Um, I've heard a lot of other people say that, oh, Marvel doesn't know how to do villains. And for the most part, they haven't done great villains. But I really enjoyed this villain. Uh, Kate Blanchett is an amazing actress and she does an amazing job. Um, love some of the other characters. We're going to get more into that in the spoilers review. Um, but you know what? Overall, this is a great movie. So in my rating system, we've got must-see. If, if I give it a must-see, then this means that this movie you have to see opening night. Uh, you don't want to get spoiled. It's I give that to Star Wars The Force Awakens. I gave that to Captain America Civil War. I give that to uh, The Dark Knight. Um, then we've got Go. That means you got to see this movie in the theater. It's a great movie. Fantastic. Then we've got Wait for Video, which, you know what? You don't need to see this movie in the theater. You can save your money, wait for it to come out on video on demand, or you buy the Blu-ray. And then we finally got No. So that would be don't waste your time going to this movie. So out of those four, I'm giving Thor a solid go. You should go see this movie in the theater. It is fun. It is dynamic. Um, the character interactions are great. Does it have some issues? Absolutely it does, in my opinion. Um, and we're going to get into that in the spoilers. So if you have not seen Thor Ragnarok, you should shut it off now. Let's put the spoiler alert up. And let's start spoiling the hell out of this movie. So, the first thing I want to mention are some of the cameos in this movie. And they did a great job keeping these secrets. Matt Demon is in this movie. He does a very short cameo when... Thor goes back to uh, Asgard and finds Loki impersonating Odin and Matt Damon is doing a play and he's playing Loki in the play. Um, I didn't quite pick up on it for the first couple of seconds. I'm like, oh my god, that's Matt Damon. Um, really funny. Um, again, the first 20 minutes of this movie is just slapstick funny. Thor goes back, he immediately knows that it's Loki because it's n this guy's not acting like Odin um, and you know, does a great hammer throw and puts Loki in front of him and says, you know what? And, and he looks like Odin and says, uh, you know, this hammer is going to come back to me one way or the other. And then Loki jumps out of the way and says, OK, OK. Then we get into the part of the movie that I really didn't care for was the way they used Odin in this movie, um, where Loki left Odin at an old folks home on Earth. And then they go to find him because Thor says, I want to find my dad. And they go to Earth and then they're standing in front of this old folks home that kind of gets crumbled because um, it's being, you know, 
demolition. And so then Doctor Strange pulls them in. So great cameo, uh, Doctor Strange. Um, and so then we get into that Doctor Strange tells them where Odin is. He's off in Europe. And they go see him, and then he dies there. And it's just, you know, it, it's an unsatisfying death for Odin because I would have really have loved to have seen Odin go out in battle, glorious death. So that's one of the things that I didn't quite like about this movie, the way that they have Odin go out. Um, this movie got better for me when Hela showed up. The first 20, 22 minutes, I was like, this is okay, it's funny, I was laughing very hard, but it's not my type of superhero movie. Then Hela shows up and we go dark. It goes dark for a bit. And they have to have a big battle with Hela. Um, then Thor gets stranded on the planet Sakaar, which at first looks like just this garbage dump of a planet. It reminded me of Wally, -E, the movie Wally, -E, um, where Wally's -E going around and cleaning up all the garbage. This was a garbage planet. And then Valkyrie shows up. So Valkyrie is a um, Asgardian as well. And she kind of kidnaps Thor and sells him to the Grand Master on Sakaar so that he can fight in the arena. Um, the Grand Master is always looking for, you know, strong people to come in and fight his champion. And it turns out his champion is Hulk. So we see the most of the battle in the trailer when he goes hey i work with this guy this is a friend from work um which is a great scene i wish they wouldn't have spoiled it in the trailer because it's a great scene between the two of them they have a fight it's a little bit short for me i think they could have made that fight a little bit better but again this movie is overall good the Grand Master is played by jeff goldblum who is really good in this role he does a really good job um then we go into Stan Lee's cameo. Uh, he's playing the barber, and he's the guy that cuts Thor's hair. So when you see in the trailer, Thor's got short hair. Well, it was Stan Lee was the barber, and he has this really cool spinning uh, scissors-like machine that cuts Thor's hair. Um, there are two end credit scenes. The first one's pretty good. The second one... Um, if you have to get up and leave, don't worry about it. Um, I'm not going to give much on the end credit scenes. Um, make sure you watch them. They are really good. Uh, the first one kind of teases the Avengers movie, so watch for that. Um, now, let's get into some character stuff. So we have Thor and Hulk, and Hulk is all of a sudden can speak very well. They don't explain this, and I'm, I, I don't understand it. He, We find out he's been Hulk for almost two years. He has not reverted back to Bruce Banner, so maybe that's why he was able to learn to talk, because he was Hulk for so long. It just seemed like, you know, less like the Hulk, because Hulk doesn't usually do much speaking in, in the comic books or in the movies or uh, even in the old TV shows. So Hulk was talking a little more than I like him to. Then we get back into Bruce Banner and we pick up into the slapstick again with uh, Thor and Bruce Banner's having a great old time. Um, Bruce Banner uh, is really, really played well. I'm having trouble remembering the actor's name that plays Hulk, but uh, does a really great job in this movie. And then Loki. Loki is really good in this movie, but how come everybody kicks Loki's butt? Why is Loki so easy to beat? He is a god. Um, he's the god of mischief, and he's tough. Um, I don't get it. Everybody seems to beat him up. Uh, Valkyrie is incredible in this movie. Um, she, When we're introduced to her at the beginning, when Thor lands on Sokar, or uh, sorry, not Sokar, Sikar, um, she comes out of this, her ship and she's drunk and she's talking to them and then just falls off the ramp, uh, hits the garbage. It's so funny. That was one of the notes in this movie that worked really, really well. Um, and you know what? That's really all that I wanted to chat about today for this movie. Um, please let me know in the comments section what you think. Again, I give this a solid go. Were there some problems with this movie? Yes, I think the comedy was a little too much for my liking. Uh, the storyline was very fast-paced, which I do like. The action sequences were great, and so I give it a go. But I want to know what you guys think. What did you think of Thor Ragnarok? 
Um, please let me know in the comments section. You can send me an email, movieguysci-fi at gmail.com, or follow me on Facebook and Twitter, at movieguysci-fi. And remember, everybody, nerds rule the world. 